Terry. Terry, I'm sorry, you guys. So many people, so many faces. All right, so we have Terry, Lynn, and John in attendance. Thank you guys for coming. I know Fran uh, is out on doing a legislative meeting out in Augusta. He wished he could be here tonight. Um, just quick, uh, Light of Dunwoody, thank you all who came. Uh, it was not a hard decision at all to postpone it a week, and I think it turned out absolutely fabulous. I'm sorry that we didn't have the reindeer, but we still had Santa and everybody else. So thank you guys for supporting that. Um, Doug Thompson just came in. Welcome to you, Doug. Good evening. So how does Santa get here? Well, Santa got here. I'm confused. I know. <laughs> and it's Mercedes. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's all the announcements that I have, unless I'm... No. There is one more Nancy's here. As an usher, it all says, did y'all come on down, sit down in front? It's not that bad. Right. If we have more tears here. And actually, our newly commissioned, DeKalb County Commissioner Nancy Jefferson. Congratulations, Nancy, and welcome. And good luck. Um, at this time, uh, I know Joe sent out the November minutes. Is there a motion to approve, or are there any changes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And the minutes are approved for November. Okay, we have a very busy agenda tonight, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to introduce Andrew Halloran and Tom Smith um, that are going to present the All Saints Project. Thank you very much for letting us tonight. My name is Tom Smith. I'm with Smith Bolin Architects. With me tonight is Andrew Halloran, civil engineer for the project. And we've been commissioned to design a master plan um, for All Saints uh, Catholic Church. I'll start the presentation real quickly. Uh, just a background of what we're going to present tonight. We're going to quickly look at an overview of the existing site, and then we'll just quickly discuss some of the problems with the site and the buildings lead up to the replacement of some existing buildings. And then Andrew's going to explain the variances and the special land use uh, permit that's required. And then we'll quickly uh, take a look at the proposed design of the uh, future buildings. And I would ask just everybody, please hold your questions until the end. Let them get through it, and then we can ask questions. Yes, thank you. Uh, we're looking at an, an aerial satellite shot of the site. Uh, you can see uh, we have... Um, Mount Vernon Road. Turn the front bank. I don't think there's a. It's only one. It's only one side. On top. This is the existing condition of the site. You can see located on the hill in the center of the site. The existing buildings and the cell tower and the white roof is the existing gymnasium facility. Just to the left of that is the uh, Cubs Scout building. Here we see an overlay of a, a line site drawing to illustrate the loop parking, the loop drive, the existing entrance into Mount Vernon, the existing <coughs> rectory, the existing church, admin classroom building, parking, gymnasium, the lowering of the site, and the Scout building. What we're proposing is to replace the the existing church, the admin building, and the scout building with the future parking deck to handle parking. Andrew, would you like to, from this point, go into the... Um, uh, yeah, so there we go back to the existing campus. The church is um, in, a, in a residential zoning, just like the neighboring uh, homes around us, all residential zoning. The church has been a part of your community since 1979. And it is part of the um, residential zoning. As part of that process, um, churches are allowed to build in residential zoning areas. They just have to go through a special land use permit process just to be able to kind of have that opportunity for, for community and for uh, government to talk about the project and so forth. And so that's kind of why we're here before you tonight to talk about that program. Um, the existing campus, as um, Tom had mentioned, um, I'll point to the loop drive on the top. Um, is currently fed um, in an offset fashion from Jet Ferry Road. If any of you are familiar with that, that corridor, uh, Mount Vernon Road comes to a traffic light with Jet Ferry Road, and then just beyond that is um, the entrance to the All Saints um, campus. And then what's the forward button? Um, again, I'm going to go to the line drawing to kind of just point that out then. So here's where Jet Ferry comes into um, Mount Vernon, and then offset from that is the current um, 
driveway to the, the All Saints campus. Um, so as we look at it in the master plan, um, a couple things I wanted to kind of point out that were being approved to the site was to um, realign the driveway with um, Jet Ferry Road and the signal there. Um, we talked to um, Public Works um, about the project and then their review of it. Um, they uh, recommended that this be aligned uh, into there. And then we're retaining one of those lanes to allow traffic to still exit um, to go eastbound. And what that's going to enable them to do is be able to have um, cars line up to have traffic lights go left and then have cars still be able to kind of go right. Helps us to kind of um, break up the traffic and, and manage the traffic. Um, and if you've been out there with the traffic cops out there, he's really trying to negotiate a lot of things at all at one time. Um, this certainly makes his job easier and will help um, reduce delays with, when, he's de when he's managing that traffic out there as well. Um, in order to do that, um, in addition to the special lane use permit, um, we've identified with the city some variances that um, have been applied for. Um, some of those variances I'll talk to you briefly about tonight. One of those relates to this driveway. Um, the city has a certain spacing that they want in driveways, just to make sure there's not too many curb cuts, as you can see, from maybe more heavily developed areas. And so the spacing that we are proposing right here as a result of lining with the intersection um, is about 145 feet between those two driveways. Um, the city code for roads that are 35 miles per hour and over um, is 245 feet. And so therefore, we needed a variance to, um, to accommodate that. Because it's only right out exit and no one's making a left in or left out, that kind of takes away the concern of why they normally have those kinds of separations on driveways. Um, and so um, the public works, again, was recognized that it's, it's needing a variance, but for the, the overall, given the built condition, that this is the best solution to propose. Um, the second variance um, that's been applied for is for um, lot coverage. Um, let me go back one slide, this will work great. So um, the lot coverage basically is the impervious area, the buildings, the pavement area, everything that's being kind of paved on the site. Um, the city of Dunwoody code currently for residential zoning is about 25% in, in residential areas. And again, that's geared, and really the theory and the, um, the spirit of that ordinance is to kind of make sure if you have a home out there, you're only going to build a home and drive on 25% of your land. You don't want someone paving a basketball court and paving the front yard and creating 50% of it previous in front of your yard. Um, churches, however, function and, and, and act a little bit differently. This existing campus right now has about 46% lot coverage. Um, and so we recognize that that's above what's existing currently allowed by code. Um, in order to um, redevelop the buildings in here, the design, um, the design approach was to try to maintain the vegetation we can around the perimeter, but knowing that in order to rebuild a building, you're going to lose some of that on the inside. And that's where, as we go to the proposed plan, that's where we're kind of developing and installing more courtyards, providing more function for the church and so forth. Um, and in, in doing that, we do increase the lot coverage. And so the variance is to ask for a lot coverage um, of 9% more to go to 55% for lot coverage. And so you look at that and say, okay, well, how does that relate to other churches? And so we did a brief study um, on that. And if, um, and out of the 12 um, other uh, religious facilities in the area, uh, eight of those 12 have over 50% already. So as far as just kind of comparison of how do churches function, um, once you look at the utility of, of the functions of their buildings or their parking lots and so forth, um, they function a little bit differently. And as far as the future land use plan, the land use plan for this area is a high intensity um, institutional use, and that's kind of you know still in the residential zoning. You kind of combine those two and say, okay, well, what kind of uh, makes sense with that? That variance, while it does increase and acknowledge that, um, relative to, to the other religious neighbors in the community, um, feel like that's within kind of some general parameters um, to be requesting. And again, the, the um, the effort with that is to preserve the perimeter tree canopy that you see around the edges um, of that campus if you've been to the site before. Um, the parking deck we notice here is a future parking deck. Um, the, the effort with that is also to minimize how much impervious area is used because you can build more parking on top of each other and not have to expand out to other areas, for example, this area over here and this area over here. We can keep that green space, keep those trees intact. Um, that parking deck builds over almost entirely existing parking. So we're trying to kind of use What's already been built, what's already been developed, what's already been kind of cleared, and, and try to make sense of that. So that's the second variance. The third variance is, um, it's going to get kind of technical, but basically, um, Dunwoody has a code to minimize how tall the walls can come off your basement. And part of that is to kind of regulate, you know, the McMansion kind of uh, phase that's out there, make sure people aren't building too, too tall a building and kind of get, trying to get extra floors out of it. So that's regulated to, I think, 10 or 12 feet um, maximum. 
on a church building, um, and you can just kind of give an example right here, this floor height is not very tall. On a church building, once you get ductwork in there, you have a structure in there. Typical church buildings um, are 14 to 16 feet on their basement level, and that's just to be able to kind of get everything kind of that you need in there. So what happens is the wing wall that we have for this courtyard here on the back around this playground, and then to kind of screen the service drive, those wing walls start off at 14 to 16 feet high, which is greater than the 10 to 12 feet that Dunwoody regulates. And then we taper it down to be something more within code. So from here, this wall comes off at a 14 to 16 foot high point and then tapers down. From here, it starts at 14 to 16 feet because that's the difference in the basement height. And again, it tapers down here because that's where the playground is. So that's the third variance we have to ask for, um, is to be allowed to have that transition uh, out there in space. Um, those courtyards are, aren't anything you would see from the public roadway. It'd just be something if you came around to the site and saw that playground, you'd say, oh, that's a taller wall than 12 feet. Um, and finally, the, the last variance is um, that one slide. Um, there is a, an existing area of chiller units, big kind of compressor uh, air conditioning units that are out here in this area. And that's in a low area that we have um, identified as a great um, location to provide stormwater improvement. <laughs> one of the things we've talked about and the church is known of wanting to invest in is improving the stormwater detention system. Um, our, our thought process is, is to be able to go into there and when we take out this heavy equip, equipment in that area, go ahead and put the stormwater detention in there. We're trying to minimize the disturbance with that by putting um, a short wall system in there, and that way we can kind of control the water before it's released um, uh, into the ditch um, that's just right there along the property line. Um, in order to do that, though, um, there is a creek, to follow my pointer, about right here. Um, the state buffer is 25 feet, which only comes so far into these yards. Um, the city regulates a 75-foot buffer, which comes about into eh, right to the edge of this, this portion right here of the pond. And so our fourth variance is just to be able to, again, to kind of go over there and provide that stormwater improvement. Um, there's an encroachment of around 10 to 15 feet or so in that edge right there. Um, and that was the fourth variance that we're asking for. So those are kind of the areas that that's, um, we've met with some homeowners um, already. Uh, with the church, we did hold a town hall meeting with them to generate some good questions and continue dialogue. Uh, we did have some server meetings with them about drainage, and so we're um, ongoing discussions um, with them about that as well. Um, but that kind of gives you the background of the code, why we're asking for the slope, why we're asking for the variances. And I'll uh, let Tom continue with the presentation. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, the, um, maybe this is the uh, landscape plan. Anything yes. you'd like to point out? Um, again, just the uh, landscaping. Um, as far as trees, um, there is a large strand of kind of pines that are in the front that would be um, taken away. We are coming back in there with some new landscape enhancements um, to address that and, and also to um, <coughs> accent the building as you kind of come in here to create a nice new entrance to the church. There'll be new trees accented there. Uh, the tree density has been calculated that to make sure it's, it's more than, um, not quite double the density needed, but there's, there's still plenty of sufficient tree density um, that's going to be on the site, as well as the landscaping uh, and the new parking areas as they um, are built. The next slide, we're back to the satellite shot and the greenery. Here we take a look, and this is real important. It illustrates the, the trees that are going to remain around the site within the site and highlighting in white of the existing uh, buildings and then the um, detention pond that Andrews just mentioned and then the parking deck. We'll get into the um, proposed architecture of the uh, new buildings and before I get into that where we're looking at the uh, existing church building I'd like to sort of real quickly touch base on the reasons why to replace these buildings. Of course, there's the program as we were hired to, to do the master plan and program study for the church and doing the study with the need for more square footage in areas for, for youth and, and parish hall and kitchen and so forth and so on. But more importantly is the settling and the bad soils that surround and were within the existing church building. Uh, years back, the church had engineer to come out and do a report. The report found that the building was settling basically all around. As we came in as the architect, we did our own study and also a budget report. We found out the cost, and it's really the cost escalated as we got into the report and talked with contractors about shoring and new members placing in. We also have a water condition where we have water flowing underneath the building and underneath the slab. And presently, the church is pumping out water from underneath the church to get the water out from underneath the building. And the settling, and then also the air conditioning, the list goes on and on and on. And once that list is established, 
you get into the requirements of bringing the building up to code. So as we went through, we came in and did the study, and with the new program and the needs, we came up with a proposed floor plan that would utilize and replace the buildings as they sit on the site, but also take advantage of where we're going to take out the unsuitable souls, would put in a full basement under there so the church could be the program that they need underneath this area. So here, we're looking at the um, slide, looking at the entrance into the existing church. Column barrier is here to the left, and the church is dead center, and the admin building is just off to the right. In the new building we see placed in the same location as the existing. This is a uh, Gothic Revival style, full masonry building. We're looking at the entrance, again, the same location, the existing church with a tower that houses the elevator and stairs. Looking at a slide that's um, at an angle, looking at the uh, existing church, and here we can see just below the church the build up in the soil, that's the soil I was referring to, and needs to be replaced and removed. building the side, we're looking again at the right of the tower, the stair tower, proposed chapel. The next view is taken from Mount Vernon. This is taken from a gap in the trees. The, the rectory is off to the right. We're looking at the roof of the existing church. And then again, through the trees and over the bushes, we see the proposed church, chapel, stair tower, and the nave of the church. This is the uh, view from Mount Vernon Road, almost in the location, which the drive would enter into the site. Again, some of y'all that may be aware of the site, at this point, when you enter the site, we're going to bring up the grade near the building, so as, as you, at the rectory, road would be reworked and it will rise up so you'll have a, the code required uh, drop from street to dr loop drive around the church. Here we see the uh, rear wraps of the church from Mount Vernon. And an aerial looking down at the um, loop drive church admin classroom building. Again, in the same location that they presently see, just replacing the existing buildings with new. We also have um, some elevations with trees. And, of course, these are taken at a distance at first so we can see the whole side of the church from left end to right end. We can see the, the bell tower, the, I mean, the stair tower here to the left, and then the bell tower to the right entrance to the church, classroom building, and just below it, the gymnasium on the lower end of the site, and just to the left, the parking deck. We can see the parking deck as it relates, this is to scale, to the other buildings on the site, and also to the heights of the trees that are surrounding the site and within the site. We're looking closer up the same elevation I was just presenting, again, the stair tower, cell tower, entrance to the church, classroom building, gymnasium building, parking deck. <coughs> and then the north-south elevation, this would be from the left end would be from Mount Vernon down toward the end of the gym. You can see the nave of the church, stair tower just beyond the bell cell tower, classroom building, Parking deck. And that ends our presentation. Andrew, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, no. okay. If you guys could just say where you are in the process for the variances and for the slots, just so we know sure. where you are in the application process for right. the city. So the applications have been um, submitted. We're on schedule for um, January uh, for variance hearing and for the planning commission uh, first hearing of the, the special land use permit. So the January. I believe it's the sixth is the variance hearing, and I think the thirteenth is the planning commission for the club. And uh, the process for that is that the variance has to be heard first before we can kind of proceed with the club process. And then the final, um, unless, unless there's anything that's 
kind of held over that it would be on schedule for, for fe uh, February with the first and second readings in there. Any questions? Did you mention Oh, sure. Yeah, as far as the, the permits area, I didn't I didn't look at um like square footage as far as how many levels and how much like building floors were in the space. I was just looking at just the overall footprint um, square footage, but I don't have that number of square footage as far as comparison to other churches. That's what this, this it's, it's projected on everything's per code calculation. It's, it's, it's to the design <laughs> of the seating in the sanctuary. Right, but Greg, that's that We're good. Greg? Right. <clears throat> Just a question. I couldn't see quite clearly from back here, but <clears throat> I'm a parishioner there. We've heard about the deck, but it looked to me like you were showing a three level deck. And we didn't, we hadn't heard yet that we were going to be moving the scout hut and all of that. So is that your intention in the future to have a three level deck? Yes, or, did I, or did I misread that? No, I mean, if you count the existing, yeah. existing parking yeah. as there on the level of the gym, yeah. and you've got two levels above that, it is coming off one of the portion of the building. Okay.
Absolutely. And, and that's that's where we want to want to keep it. And of course, we we're going to remove some trees off the center line there, on, uh, lining up Jet Road right. uh, to tree removal where the the tension pond is going to go. But, but presently, there there's uh, some units, HMC units, that have close up areas that are more larger that tend to be removed, and we're adding trees. So we really strong. Just keep in mind that there, there's the trees around the site are going to remain. And also about the height and the, and the size of the structure, we, we have to remain in the guidelines that are set forth at, at the city about the height. Oh, it's below three. As, if you look, remember the we're well below tree height out there over 100 feet from the town. You know, the, the, the level of the sanctuary is at the same level as the present. It's a basement and a 